Hello, hello! Welcome to my training, How to Eat Plant-Based Without Losing Muscle or Gaining Weight. I am Kristen Eck Bosley, and I'm going to take you right through this training. And the reason why I titled this training the way it is, because these are three huge questions that I get in terms of plant-based eating. Like, one, how to eat plant-based to how can I eat more plants without losing muscle? And then lastly, how can I eat plant-based and not gain weight? Because that is a complaint that I hear pretty regularly. So I'm gonna walk you through all of this during this training. All right, so I wanna make sure that you're in the right place, you're not wasting your time. So this presentation is for you if you may be new to plant-based eating and you wanna learn about some healthier options and kind of what a plant-based diet looks like. It's also for people who have been plant-based and wanna make some changes in their diet or their lifestyle, like they wanna build muscle, maybe you wanna lose some weight, or most importantly for everybody, if I'm sure, you wanna add variety to your diet in terms of food, right? And have lots of choices. And it's definitely for people who want to finally understand how much protein they actually need for overall health and to build and maintain muscle. All right, so in the next 35 minutes or so, you're gonna learn, like I said, how to build muscle, how to improve your energy, boost it, and improve your health on a plant-based diet. You'll learn how to incorporate more plant-based proteins into your diet and also how macronutrients impact your weight loss, weight gain, and muscle growth so you can finally reach those goals. And so before I kind of jump into this topic, I want to clarify what I mean by a plant-based diet and some of the different um, you know, versions of plant-based diets that are out there. You might have heard of a few of these and some might be new to you. So the strictest form of a plant-based diet is called a whole foods plant-based diet. And what that ultimately means is that these people only eat fruits, veggies, legumes, nuts, and grains. Okay, so they do no meat, no dairy, nothing that's processed, no oils. Um, so that is like the strictest form of it. A vegan diet avoids all animal products, okay? Um, a vegetarian diet is a little bit different. They might be less strict. You know, they might consume some dairy. Um, they might do some eggs. Some people do that. It really depends on the person. Um, but also, you know, a vegan vegetarian diet will allow for some more processed foods, you know, like plant-based powders, for example, than a whole foods plant-based diet. What is most trending for 2020 in terms of sustainability is, um, you know, and, and also just for what would be more sustainable for a lot of people is a pescatarian or a flexitarian diet. Okay, so that's for people that are you know, incorporating fish but taking out meat and dairy. All right, you're flexitarian, meaning that you might do meat once in a while. Um, so that's really kind of what we're seeing out there. And I'm sure a lot of people wonder, you know, what's best for me? And what I always recommend to clients is whatever makes you feel best, whatever you can sustain, and whatever aligns with your health goals and your core values, okay? And speaking of that, you know, how awesome would it be if you could actually understand what foods to eat for your goals? Because everyone is different, guys. And when you Google things online, like Google has no idea who you are, right? Google is a simple algorithm, right? And you're way more complex than an algorithm. Um, if you could enjoy how you eat and not sabotage yourself by gaining weight or not feeling good about yourself, right? And lastly, I want you to, you know, stop being confused. I know a lot of you guys are here because you're confused and you want to know how to eat healthy for real, right? What's actually healthy with lots of variety that's super, super important to you. All right, and so I'm gonna talk about this throughout this entire training, but you have to say the whole time, right? To really understand how all this works, okay? And, and really know my five steps. And so for you to stick around to the very end, I'm gonna offer a free gift to you. So I will give away my plant-based protein cookie dough bite recipe. Some of you might have already tried this before. My recipe is really, really special because it is free of all food allergens. It is sugar-free, grain-free, it is vegan, it is nuts-free, it's also soy-free as well. And each ball has seven grams of protein, right? And this is all about plant-based protein today. Um, and only 76 calories. You will not find this recipe on Pinterest. This is custom from me, and I'll share it with you at the very end. All right, so a little bit more about me and kind of, you know, how I'm an expert on this topic. So I am a health and weight loss coach. I'm also a certified personal trainer, sports nutritionist. Um, I have worked with clients of all different, you know, 
backgrounds, people with diabetes, people with you know, rheumatoid arthritis, endometriosis, fibromyalgia, ex um, eczema, all kinds of things, all kinds of health concerns, okay? And my food's philosophy, all right? And those of you who know me, you know this is super true. Eat what you love. I personally eat chocolate every single day. That is something that I'm not willing to take out of my diet, and I know how to control it and for, you know, healthier alternatives. I also believe in not following the herd, not doing what everyone else is doing because it works for some people. You know, you really have to do what's best for you. And I personally follow a plant-based diet, and I'm going to share with you why I do that. So why I became plant-based. And the number one reason why I became a plant-based eater is because of the environmental impact. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard about, you know, raising meat and how it impacts our global um, you know, our, our world. And so I'll talk a little bit about that on the next slide. Um, but another reason why I decided to go plant-based was because of the crazy amount of food lobbying I see. Um, last summer, I attended the Florida Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Convention um, here in South Florida. And I was really, really blown away just by how much meat and dairy um, you know, influences our food culture, right? And they really sponsor this four-day event, everything. And we see a lot of that, you know, in politics. And that's really why we see such a prominent amount of meat and dairy, why it's so cheap. And that just really rubbed me the wrong way, learning more about the harmful effects of meat and dairy. And so that's ultimately what made me go plant-based. And I'll kind of tell you a little bit about of how I've benefited from this diet and why I help people go this direction if they choose to. So a few things about meat, for example, you know, it is the number one water polluter, right? Livestock animal feces, right? In our rivers, our lakes, um, getting into our oceans. Also, you know, in terms of health, and since I am a health coach, I'm always concerned about health and, and pesticide consumption. And meat has 15 times more pesticides than plants, which is crazy to think about. So avoiding meat and dairy products is the single best way to reduce your environmental impact on the planet. And so that right there was powerful enough for me to really make this change. And I'm so, so happy I did. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this training right now have already made that change and you want to continue with that change and just, you know, tweak a few things in your diet. So I'll help you with that as well. So let's go ahead and jump into this topic, the five steps to learn how to eat plant-based without losing muscle or gaining weight. All right, guys, if you have a pen and paper, I would definitely make sure you have that out, get ready to take some notes. If not, have your phone next to you and jot down some notes because you're going to learn a lot. Here we go. So step number one is to eat less protein. And yes, I am a personal trainer, sports nutritionist telling you to eat less protein, and I'm going to tell you why. First reason you should eat less protein, okay? And I know our society tells us we should eat tons of protein, but here's why, guys, we shouldn't. So because too much protein causes elevated blood sugar levels, it also causes increased hunger, and it also induces cravings, right? And so these are all things that ultimately lead to a lot of the, you know, chronic diseases we have. It also, you know, increases our chances of diabetes, and all these other ailments we have in our society, right? And so eating less protein will help us overcome high blood sugar. It'll reduce our hunger and reduce our cravings. That is one of the biggest things I noticed once I went plant-based and eating you know, less protein was how I wasn't as hungry and I had less sugar cravings. And I have a big sweet tooth, like I said before, I love chocolate and going plant-based helps. Also, guys, you know, excessive protein is not good for our gut health, okay? And we have heard, I'm sure, how gut health is super, super important because, you know, especially red meat, guys, like eating a ton of animal protein is going to be really difficult to digest. And so it really puts a lot of um, stress on the gut. And also, guys, it makes us really tired. Think about how you feel after eating a huge steak, okay? Or on, you know, Thanksgiving Day, you're eating... Um, you know, a lot of turkey, right? Or you're eating these massive meals with tons of protein. It makes you really sleepy, right? So when you're eating less protein, you know, you're actually going to have more energy. And also, I always recommend to plant-based eaters taking a B12 vitamin, okay, or a B-complex. Very helpful for improving your energy levels as well, all right? So 
I'm going to go into the next slide of how much protein to actually consume. So this is the golden question, right? You want to make sure you write this down. How much protein do I actually need? So there's a couple different numbers I'm going to share with you today. The first calculation is for just general health, right? So your bone health, maintenance for your current muscle mass. And this calculation comes from one of the world-renowned experts on health and longevity. It's Dr. Walter Longo. He actually runs the Longo Longevity Institute out of University of Southern California. He has written several books on plant-based diet, Mediterranean diet, and he has studied the blue zone um, communities very, very carefully. And all of them have one thing in common, okay, the longest living um, civilizations on the planet, right? They all have very minimal protein, animal protein for that matter. And so his recommendation is to consume 0.34, there should be a point there, 0.34 to 0.36 grams per pound of body weight. All right, so for example, you know, if I weigh 145 pounds, you know, times 0.35, I'll go right in the middle of 0.34 and 0.36. So that's about 51 grams of protein per day, okay? So that is like the minimum amount of protein I wanna get in a day. And guys, that's really easy to do. And I'm gonna show you why in a couple slides from now. And something else that a lot of people don't know is that your gut wall, okay, this is why gut health is so important. When you're healthy, your gut wall recycles protein absorbed by the gut lining. Your body is actually able to reuse protein um, that you might not have used the previous day. And you can actually um, absorb up to 20 grams of protein per day from a healthy gut. Right? So if you only have to eat 51 grams of protein per day, right, and you're already upcycling 20 grams, that's really only 30 grams that you need. So this is why we really don't need as much protein as we think we do. And this is just for, you know, health and maintenance, like I mentioned. Now, if you're looking to build muscle, so we call this muscle hypertrophy and also to improve your strength. And this calculation is pretty common. You'll see this probably online in multiple places. You know, my personal training certification from the National Academy of Sports Medicine, also some other ones, as I've listed, you know, this is the recommended formula. So 0 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. So if we take the weight of 140 top, 145, multiply that by 0.7, that's smack in the middle. I'm going for around 100 grams of protein a day, okay? And again, guys, like that's not that difficult to do, all right? And so that's really something that we don't really tend to see, okay, is that, you know, we don't need a ton of protein. You might see with some other websites, you need one gram of protein per pound of body weight. You have to look at the source, okay? If you find that on bodybuilding.com, for example, obviously they're selling supplements right? And so they want you to think you need tons of protein so you could buy their protein powder and their protein bars and, you know, all these things that you really don't need, right? So you have to look at the source. So the sources I have shown you here, these are accredited, you know, sports nutrition, um, you know, doctors, experts that know how to build muscle and how much protein that you need, right? And something else I want to mention here, guys, when you consume too much protein, your body is going to break that down as sugar, and that's actually going to cause hunger, cause cravings, and will elevate your blood sugar levels. As I mentioned earlier, your body simply can't absorb that much protein if you're going in excessive amounts. One last thing I'll mention here, guys, a fact about protein consumption, like when you have to have it. I get this question a lot. Timing is not that important. You do not have to chug a protein shake right after you work out. You're not going to like lose muscle right away. Okay, so as long as you're getting that number of grams of protein, so I'm getting 100 grams of protein per day, it doesn't matter when I'm having it during the day as long as I'm getting it in, right? And there's a lot more research coming out that timing is not so important. It's more about just getting the consumption in overall. Also, what I recommend um, is having less starchy and less fatty proteins. And I'm going to get into the reason why here um, on my next step. But here are some simple ways to get some plant-based protein. So for example, hemp or vegan proteins. I actually prefer grain-free proteins, especially if you have any kind of inflammation, autoimmune conditions, if you suffer from chronic inflammation, I would definitely go for grain-free. So those are two options right there. Also guys, organic tofu, edamame, tempeh, seitan, and miso. Those are all forms of organic soy. You wanna make sure you do organic soy because 95% of US soy is genetically modified. 
And so we want to make sure that we are pesticide free and we're doing organic or as least amount of pesticides as possible. I also love black bean pasta, which is very high in fiber, and edamame pasta, which is high in protein and fiber, lower in carbohydrates. So that's a good option. And spirulina is super underestimated. It is a plant algae. And for every tablespoon, you get three or four grams of protein. Throwing that in the smoothie will definitely increase your protein uptake. Also, guys, vegetables have protein. A lot of people don't realize that, right? So, for example, spinach, kale, Brussels sprouts, asparagus. Ooh, got a temple right there. Um, lots of green veggies, guys. All have roughly about three to four grams of protein per cup. So if you're making a big salad, for example, with lots of different vegetables in there or some kind of like veggie stir fry, you're going to get a lot of protein. You can get like about 20 grams of protein right there with all different kinds of veggies. So you can easily get your protein numbers in with on a plant-based diet. All right, I'm going to give an example, guys, of someone I worked with. His name was Todd. And um, this guy, it was pre-diabetic and had high blood pressure, chronic high blood pressure. He was on medication for years. And his doctor kind of scared him and was like, you need to really change up your act. And Todd was ex-military, so super regimented. You know, he worked out five days a week. Um, and he was in shape. You know, he wanted to lose like 10, 15 pounds, but more importantly, he wanted to get his health back in line. And what I saw in Todd's diet that he didn't even realize was causing his blood sugar levels to be elevated was that he was eating way too much animal protein, way too many processed food products, which has hidden sugars in them. And he had fruit several times a week. And not that I'm anti-fruit, but in combination with the elevated animal protein and the processed foods, it was really elevating his blood sugar levels, okay? So what we did was we limited his animal protein, we increased his veggies, we did a few things in terms of his diet, and he got great results, all right? So here's a little quick testimonial from him. I'll just kind of give you the basics here. In seven weeks, guys, okay, he was able to have significant reductions in his blood sugar and hypertension levels in addition to losing 12 pounds. So he really hit his, his target weight loss too. And his doctor was very impressed that he could make so much progress in such a short period of time. He's so sweet and mentioned that my fitness and nutrition knowledge is very impressive and my commitment to his success was a game changer. So I am super, super thankful to Todd, but more importantly that he really changed his life and his health is back on track and he has inspired others, okay? So I wanna go guys now into step number two, which is gonna be really important for you guys to understand in terms of weight loss and health because eating for health doesn't always mean eating for weight loss, all right? And so here's what I mean by that. This is why people gain weight on a plant-based diet. And there's one of the biggest reasons why, and there are several, but I wanna focus on this today, is because ultimately in a plant-based diet, we increase our fat and carbohydrate intake, which is why earlier I was saying, when you go for proteins, I want you to pick less starchy and less fatty protein sources because we get fats and carbs in other ways on a plant-based diet. And the truth is guys, fats plus carbs equals fat storage, which leads to weight gain. Okay, that's a key formula right there. So eating for health is different than eating for weight loss. Okay, so oftentimes plant-based diets, vegetarian diets can be very high in fats and carbs. For example, avocado toast. Okay, this is actually, I did a whole article on my blog about this. Um, although it is healthy, right, ish, okay, very high in fat with the avocado and high in carb from the bread. Lentil pasta, same thing. There is definitely some protein in lentil, but there's a lot more carbs in lentil pasta and lentils. And I love lentils, guys. I'm Puerto Rican. I grew up on them. Vegan cheeses, delicious, but they're still very high in fats, okay, even in higher fat than some regular cheeses because um, they're nut-based, right? And then rice and beans, although delicious, beans have fiber and some protein, but ultimately very, very high in carbohydrates, right? Um, another example of foods that look healthy, but they really don't promote weight loss, they promote weight gain, are granolas, okay? And some people will look at this kind of granola right here, you know, we see fruit and nut, okay, awesome, that seems healthy, and it's non-GMO, great, 
but you know we have carbs and the fruit and then nuts are the fat right so and look at the calories i mean almost 300 calories for half a cup and half a cup's not a lot okay and this is just a no-no for weight loss okay so you're probably thinking oh god kristen's gonna want me to count macros and know how many fats how many carbs i'm eating right? And, and that's not at all what I'm asking you to do, okay? What I'm actually asking you guys to do this is step three. I don't want you to count your macros. I hate counting things. I think it's a waste of time. I want you to understand them, okay? That's the most important thing to me, to understand macronutrients. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So in terms of macronutrients, there are actually four main macronutrients, but I'm going to focus on the first three first. So protein, right? Protein to macronutrient, we know it's helpful for muscle recovery, growth, and for us feeling full and satiated. Fats are important because they're helpful for energy, satiety, brain function. Our brain is 60% fatty lipids, and so um, fat is really helpful for that, and also important for hormone regulation. Carbohydrates are helpful also for muscle recovery and growth, and glucose is usually the body's primary fuel source, okay? So I'm not asking you to cut out any of these macronutrients, right? It's the, the best diets have the most variety in foods and food groups, right? And, and macronutrients. So no, I'm not saying cut these things out or anything out, but it's most important to know what they are. Fourth macronutrient is actually alcohol. A lot of people don't realize that. So alcohol does not break down as sugar. It's not a carbohydrate. Alcohol is its own macronutrient. Okay, little fact there. All right, so Understanding macros and in terms of fats and carbohydrates. So the truth is, guys, we have to consume fats and carbohydrates according to your goals, your food preferences, your dietary needs, and activity level. So for example, I have worked with some clients who are very sensitive and their body does not process lots of saturated fats, right? They don't do well with avocados, coconuts, and so they actually have a higher carbohydrate diet and we go less on the fats, right? And some people do better, you know, with more fats and less carbohydrates. You know, if you're looking to really build muscle and add mass, you know, a lot of people go to oatmeal, for example, right? Because that's what it's good for, right? If horses want to um, bulk up for winter when there's no grass for foraging, you know, their owners treat, um, feed them oats, right? So oats is great for that. Is oats great for a weight loss meal? Not really, okay, in most cases. So you really have to do what's best for your food preferences, your activity level, your goals, and also know that not all fats are created equal. Fats, carbs, protein, and veggies, right? We have to consider their digestibility, like which ones can my body handle the best? You know, we have to look at the glycemic index, like which carbs, for example, spike our blood sugar and which ones, you know, do, do we digest over time, right? Which carbs um, have fiber in them? We want to go more with the fibrous carbohydrates and not with the, the lower fiber carbohydrates and sugar content, right? And as I said before, guys, a lot of carbohydrates, although they don't have sugar in them and the labels, our body breaks them down as sugar, okay? Like oats, for example, even unsweetened ones. So we have to understand our macros and how our body processes them, all right? And this is why I don't like counting macros, okay? And especially when you try to count your macros, guys, you're most likely going to fail, you know, when you're eating away from home because you don't really know what is in what is in your meal. You don't know how many carbs are in your, your pasta dish at the restaurant, right, or how much fat or proteins in there. Also, guys, we tend to underestimate how much or little you're eating, right? Especially we tend to underestimate how much we're eating, this from my experience at least. And then most importantly, guys, we get sick and tired of counting macros, right? Who wants to count everything for the rest of your life? So I'm not a fan of counting macros. I am a fan of understanding macros because that's when you're empowered to eat anywhere with confidence, um, and you don't sabotage your diet. You know exactly what you're doing. You can read food labels and menus and cook meals knowing exactly the food will serve or how it'll impede your goals. Okay, and you can share and brag with others how you don't count anything, but you make meals count. So you know exactly what you're eating, not just by numbers, but by nutrients. Okay. Here's an example of that. So in my, I just ran a challenge with some of my clients and we were looking at different food labels and knowing 
you know what was not healthy about it, and how we can make it actually healthier. So I know this is actually not a plant-based meal here, but I don't push it on people that I work with. So this, you know, chicken salad, right? Especially if, like in a ketogenic world, people think that chicken salad is amazing, right? But this chicken salad actually has a lot of fat and a lot of sugar, a lot of carb sources in here. And people might not realize that. And so what my clients over here is doing is they're saying, okay, like, these are the fat sources, this is the sweeteners, the sugars, and here's what we can do to make it healthier, right? And that is the key. And notice, guys, there's no nutritional ingredients right here, right? All they're doing is reading the label and saying, okay, this is not good, this is not good, here's what I would do to fix it. And that is the, it, what's what I mean by being empowered, right? Knowing how to make this better and why this is not a good choice for you, okay? And there's plenty of ways to make this better. Plenty of plant-based protein options out there as well. All right, enough food talk, guys. Let's talk about fitness, building muscle, and leaning out, okay? So step four, I want you to lift more weights and do less cardio to build that muscle, okay? And you can still lose weight that way too, all right? And the reason why is because resistance training, okay, tones and firms our bodies. And I know a lot of people have this misconception that, you know, weights make us bulky. But the truth is, guys, and my clients know that I say this all the time, weights don't make us bulky. Too much food does. When people bulk up when they're lifting weights, because they're also eating a ton of food to, you know, to really increase their mass, right? And so weights don't make us bulky. Weight training is actually imperative, super important for bone health metabolic function, so keeping our metabolism high, and increasing lean muscle mass. The more lean muscle mass we have on our body, the less fat ultimately we're going to have, and the more calories we will burn at rest. Something else to consider, guys, you know, too much cardio, okay, is not good because excessive cardio breaks down muscle. It doesn't build muscle. Look at a lot of sprinters, for example, guys. Here's an example. You know, they're, they're shredded, right? They have muscle. They don't do a lot of running. They do a lot of short, intense running. Okay, marathoners have, you know, less muscle on their bodies and they're more built for endurance. Okay. Also, I know EPOC, okay, excessive post um instead of post oxygen consumption, you know, that is very popular now with orange theory. We hear that in soul cycle or in spin classes, you know, it's actually much higher after weight training, not cardio, right? And a lot of people don't realize that. And also activity trackers like your Fitbit or your Apple watch, they don't accurately compute calorie calories burned during weight training. And they overemphasize on cardio. Fitness trackers actually have a 20 to 30% error rate when it comes to tracking your calories. So do not go by your trackers for how many calories you're burning. Another big mistake there, guys. And then these two pictures I wanna show you guys. On the left was when I was doing a lot of cardio, a lot of running. I was walking like 20,000 steps or more a day. I was super cardio crazy. And this picture here was actually when I was doing half the amount of cardio and way more weight training, okay? And so this is really how I transform my body was with the weight training, okay? And I have a story here from one of my clients, Sophie, who actually came to me for weight loss and toning up, and she was getting ready for a wedding. You know, halfway through our work together, she got engaged. And before we started working together, she really just went to group exercise, you know, cardio-based classes like Zumba and Cycle, and she really just wasn't getting the results. And she was honestly afraid to lift weights because she had, you know, injured her back in a car accident and she really just had no confidence in working out and lifting weights. And so I definitely helped her with that. And so here we see a little picture of her working out by herself, which is a huge deal, number one. And then the actual weight training workout, she's lifting, look, 15, 20 pounds. And then she ended up like increasing her weights over time. But over our work together, she lost 18 pounds in 12 weeks, which was over all the holidays too, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and even when she got engaged. So the fact that she lost weight in this time of year was huge. And she actually started out like cutting less or cutting out meat in her diet. And she learned how to cook easy, quick meals after eating out too often. And so that's really a couple of the ways in which she changed her life, right? Which is awesome. All right, last step, guys, step five. I want you to really consider this, invest in the right support 
not things you don't need, okay? I want to save you guys time and energy um, and not money, okay, and not waste your money. So what I mean by this, I want you guys to really understand the importance of investing in quality foods to nourish your body and support your goals, okay? I do not want you to waste your money on supplements, right? It is a $62 billion industry for a reason, right? And there is no reason for you to be throwing your money down the drain with that as well. Or pre-made meals too, guys. Like that's not going to teach you how to eat properly when you're out and about. Those meals get expensive. That's not solving the problem. I also want you to invest your time to really understand nutrition, what foods serve your body best, and what your real problems are, okay? Because that's the goal. And then ultimately, guys, to get the right kind of support, for your needs, like what you actually need to be successful. And so that's why I want to ask you, like, what do you really need help with? Because a lot of people turn to a diet to fix their problems, but it's actually not the diet that's going to fix the problem in most cases. And I want to kind of, you know, encourage you to consider this. So what do you need help with? Is it just improved health? You know, is it weight loss? But what are the other underlying problems? Is it that you're overeating? Okay, because if you're overeating healthy foods, you're going to gain weight or you're not going to see results, okay? Do you lack motivation, you know, to continue on a diet plan? Do you have no consistency in your life, right? You're just not doing things for a long enough period of time to see results. You have this all or nothing mindset. You're either all in or you're not doing anything at all. You have these crazy cravings that you just can't control. You know what to eat or you think you know what to eat, but you just can't stick to a plan. You have a hard time managing stress and that just gets in the way of you getting results. Okay, maybe you just need help with exercise. Like you're not lifting weights, you don't know where to start, you really need to get a plan together. Or lastly, guys, planning ahead and managing your time. Is this, is this what you really need help with, right? This is something I hear a lot. And I want to be honest because a diet doesn't usually solve the problem. Right, And I know this whole training was about a plant-based diet, and I hope some of the things I talked about helped you, but I want you to be true to yourself. And for whatever your goals are, what do you need to fix it Okay, and get those goals? Because a sustainable, stress-free plan is key to all your health and weight loss goals. So as long as you can eat plant-based and you know, keep doing it and it's stress-free, you know, that is what's going to get you where you need to be. But if there's some other bumps in the road, we have to talk about those, right? So, you know, if you don't change, you just keep doing what you're doing, okay? You're going to waste time, money, and energy figuring this out, okay? Just keep consuming information and doing nothing with it. You're going to stay confused, frustrated, and just give up, okay? And continue to yo-yo diet and follow what everyone else is doing and never have lasting results. But guys, if you do change and start implementing the things I taught you today, you're gonna save time. You're gonna save money and energy for other things in your life. You're gonna get this clarity. You're gonna have this confidence, which turns into motivation, right? And that is the key, having motivation so you can stay consistent. And when you're consistent, you have success, right? And if you change, what you do is you create your own path that is sustainable, not following what everyone else is doing. Okay, because that's not going to work for you in most cases. So today, guys, I promise I would teach you how to build more muscle, improve your energy and your health on a plant-based diet. Okay, I also said I would tell you how much protein you actually need for health and muscle growth and how understanding macros and nutrition will empower you on your health, weight loss journey if you want to build that muscle. Okay, and now you have a very important decision to make. I want to empower you here. You know, you can either stay exactly where you are now, you know, don't make any changes and just keep on researching and hoping to find more answers. Obviously, I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is number two, start implementing the five step plan today and take action ASAP. Okay, and here are the five steps that I went over during the presentation today. Hopefully you were taking notes. If not, snap a picture so you have this, okay? And I know I gave you guys a lot of information. You may have some more questions as to how this would work for you 
And so I encourage you to book a free call with me, okay? If you're serious about eating a more plant-based diet or close to it, like flexitarian, for example, and reaching your health and weight loss goals. You know, if you've tried doing this on your own and you're tired of failing to see consistent change or any results, and you just don't wanna waste any time and are ready to take action ASAP and know exactly how to make this part of your life, Okay, I've set some, some time aside, you know, to speak with you, you know, the next 48 hours. I really want to encourage you guys to take action and not put this off anymore. Just go to my website, createmyweight.com backslash apply, and you could book a free call with me, no obligations at all. And I want to leave you guys with some final words, okay? What we do consistently is who we will become. So my question to you, you know, do you consistently look for answers and do nothing? Okay, do you consistently start to make changes and stop? You know, you're always looking for the next thing. I want you to stop consuming, like stop consuming, like, you know, not as healthy foods, you know, foods that don't serve your goals. Stop consuming information, right? And start doing, start taking action, right? That's the biggest thing I can encourage you guys to do today. Take action. So thank you guys for joining me. Um, if you want to talk to me more about this topic, I would love to answer any more questions that you have. You can go to my website to book a free call with me, createmyweight.com backslash apply. And as I promised, here is my recipe for my protein cookie dough bites. Okay, snap a picture of this. You can write this down. I'm also going to make sure I have a link below here where you can click and access this recipe as a thank you for sticking with me. But most importantly, guys, you have that five step plan to take action. And if you need help, you want to learn more, book a call with me. All right, guys, createmyweight.com. Have an amazing day. I hope this was helpful. Hopefully talk to you guys in the near future. Bye.